Hey, what's up, Lawn Care Nuts? All right, so I am actually now at my new location. And when I say my new location, the new area where I'm gonna live. I'm not actually in the house yet. I am staying at an extended stay. And as you can tell, I'm trying to give you absolutely no real background out the windows or anything, because I don't want to give you any hints at all about where I'm at. But I wanted to go ahead and just give you an update, let you know I haven't forgotten about the channel. I know I haven't updated in like 11 days, and that's really long. I also know I need to shave, but that's always a common problem that I have. Anyway, let's just talk about a couple things. So I was able to go to North Carolina during my transition period here and see my parents. They live in Western North Carolina in the mountains and get together with my dad who is the most handy dandy dude I've ever known. He's also my hero in life and he and I were able to make a DIY lawn striper for his riding mower. So I thought that'd be really cool because that's something that a lot of you guys had asked about over time. You'd said, Al, we love your DIY lawn striper that you made for your mower but what about for a riding mower? So that's what this is. Um, I will tell you this, my dad's lawn is pretty much a pasture. It's like 90% crabgrass and pasture grass and everything else. So it doesn't stripe at all. It doesn't do anything, but it looks pretty good when it's cut. But either way, this is it. DIY lawn striper for riding mowers. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut, and I'll see you in the lawn. And there you, what are you doing? Pick the rock out of my grit tires. I Pick hate it. Picking the rock out of your tires. I hate that. Well, you ready to go to the hardware store and get what we need? Yes. All right, let's do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Well, let's get rodeo. Okay, so we got everything we need now. Our considerations are this. When you understand how lawn striping works, all you need to do is have the grass lay a little bit one way so that it'll reflect differently in the sun and then the next stripe the grass will lay the other way. So the other considerations are we need to make it fairly inexpensive as well as we don't want to modify the mower too much. In other words, we don't want to drill into the frame of the mower. We don't want to ruin it. We don't want to avoid any warranties. So with that in mind, let's go look at all the stuff that we have to put together for this lawn striper. Okay, so we've assembled all the pieces that we're going to need in order to make the striper. So let's go through what we need and then we'll go ahead and build it. So the first thing we have, which is the most integral part, and this was dad's perfect idea, are these. And what this is, these are legs from an old table. If you've ever had a picnic at your church, you always had those folding tables. These are the legs that come off of them. And I'm not sure, what church did you steal that from, dad? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that on the air. <laughs> so, so what's perfect about this, as you can see, it's already got places that we can um, hook this to the mower, as well as down here where we can attach the striper. So. That's kind of the centerpiece of this. And then, of course, we're going to have a 2x4 that will attach up here. So the 2x4 is, we're going to dry fit it. The 2x4 will go there, and then that will sit there. So you can kind of see how we're developing already. That looks pretty good right there. Let's that just looks good. Let's just end the video right now. All right, and then here is, so we've got here 3-inch PVC. And so you can see how that's going to go. Now the reason we're using PVC is because we want to be able to back up. One of the drawbacks to the DIY lawn striper that I made for my push mower is you can't back up. So I thought when we do this, we want to be able to back up, especially with a riding mower, you're going to, so when we have the PVC there, it's not specifically going to roll, but it will also not cause friction going forward or backward. It won't get in the way. And because our frame is stiff, we don't have to worry about it getting caught up underneath the wheel. And then you also need a couple of caps that'll go on the end and you're going to fill it with sand to give it some weight. As far as width goes, we're uh, going all the way out right to the edges of the tires because as you know, the tires will also make stripes. This goes on here. And yeah, then so. So yeah. all, all there. The pusher has to go on because the hole is bigger than the bolt. Nut. So find center, okay. Find center. Measure your center to center of the pipe. That's 23 and a half. That makes it 11 and 3 quarter. That's 11 and 3 quarter, so that two combined should be 23 and a half if my math is halfway right. Dead on. That on. Yeah. See those? That that's the center of that pipe. Mm -hmm. That's the center of that pipe. What we got to do is we got to make sure that when we drill this hole, 
and drill this hole that they are exactly in line. Otherwise, your thing, your thing's going to go down this way on the ground. It's not going to lay straight. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set it against the rail of my fence, like right there, and I'm going to draw a line right down the edge of this fence. There, see, and that puts that dead across from each other. There's dead center, and there's dead center. And when I drill these holes, they'll be right straight in line. Right. Now see here, I'm going to go ahead and start me up a pilot hole right on that X. We well, want it to fit snug because you don't want your you want to move too much. sand coming out. See, that's just a little bit, but what I think I can do is I can put it in there and then ream it. Bit. No. Down and around. See how much more we got to go, if at all. Right a little bit right there and I think we'll have it. That I can see right here on this edge where it's not completely rounded mm -hmm. in. So what I'll do is I'll come back. That'll go. Yeah. That'll go. You may have to take and tap it a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. I'd rather it be tight. Oh, that went in there already. Out. Yep, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom of the tube so it'll sit nice and tight. Now, nope. see my pencil marking on that right in there where that pipe's coming through. Oh, on the actual, yeah, on, the, on that, on the on the black thing here, yeah, yeah, on that leg, on the brace, same thing on this. I'll pull it back out, and, and then what there's what we're gonna do is drill a hole right where those marks are so that we can put a cotter pin through there from the inside. To hold it in. Hold it in. Hole all the way through so that we can feed that wire through it. So what we're doing is, is this is a coat hanger and this is what's going to feed through on the inside to hold those inside of the PVC pipe. We'll show you in a minute. You can put that in the vise. Get that started so that my drill bit doesn't walk all over that round metal. And I want to drill it into wood so that when it comes through yep. the other side. Okay, so you got your holes drilled, right? Right, and I'm going to put it in there and then the wire is going to come through yep. and then bend back around over itself and and can probably take some pliers you know and twist it like that right and that'll hold it inside the PVC wire through our hole then I'm going to feed it all the way down the length of the pipe and out the other end and out the other end in fact I've got that hook right here yeah so push it all the way through push it all the way through not through this hole though. It's going to come out. Hole. Then we're going to put a crook in it and then I'm going to pull it all the way back so that that crook then becomes around here and yep. then I can twist it. Exactly. There it is. Okay, I'm okay. through. I'm going to push it. Now send it all the way down to me. There it is. Okay. So if I do it, so all I gotta do is really just just bend it around there. Okay, so now we have a bent, a bend here, and the reason we're doing that is because we have to pull it back to the other end. You're gonna see in a second. Are we ready? Yep. Got it. Okay. Now when it comes here, it forms that loop around that hole right there. Now the you loop see, is there. there. So essentially, what's happening is the now the wire is looped. It goes through. 
and comes back around. So we essentially have a loop around and now we're just gonna tie that loop up. There you can see it. It's looped around the frame that comes inside the PVC. We cut this off a little bit too because yeah, it's gonna to be out of your way. way. Get my pliers right there where that cross is and just start twisting the wire. And that will lock it in place. Give that a couple of jerks up and see if it's gonna come out of that hole. All right, so we got our loop. I was gonna pull the loop back through. We're through. You got it? Yeah. We got it right here. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. Yeah. Feels solid. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's gonna come out of there. Under normal circumstances, we would glue that cap. Right. You got a big enough funnel? Yeah. I think so. If not, we'll make one. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're going to go ahead and fill the tube with sand. We did buy two caps, good three-inch caps. Normally, you'd probably want to glue those on. We're not going to do that for purposes of the video here, though. Also, if you're wondering what all the, if you're wondering what all the rushing noise is behind me, it's because of this creek right here. Well, your, yours is bumpy at old pasture land. <laughs> Mine's converted cow pasture. Yeah, the rest of us have home lawns and neighborhoods. Ain't gonna happen here. <laughs> See everything's hooked in right here. And again, Dad, pick it up like when you hit a bump. Let, let's show them what it'll do because now it'll pivot. See, so when you hit bumps, it can go up and down and that way it won't get in the way. So now we gotta test it. Okay guys, so we are done. They're, the stripes are not as impressive as we had hoped, but again, that's because this is more pasture grass. If this was turf grass, this would work great. But I will tell you that we mowed quite a, a lot of this lawn and it held up great. The striper held up great. It's still over there on the mower. Nothing broke off and uh, did a really good job. So the one thing that we do here in the mountains after we're done with all of our lawn work is we pull out the guns and we have a little fun. 